Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. James Lutheran Church on this snowy, cold day. Uh, thank you to those who worked so hard to get our campus ready and, and to receive you this morning. Sidewalks cleared and, and so on. Um, thank you to the choir for being here today uh, as well uh, and enriching our service. It's the last Sunday of the church year, Pentecost. 24, the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. And again, we're focusing our attention yet on the last day. And today the reminder is for us to just be ready, right? Um, in the first lesson, we'll, we'll hear the prophet uh, resound with that call that's so familiar to us too. How long, right? We become tired and frustrated with waiting and, and Jesus reminds us, just keep waiting, be ready. Uh, I am coming again soon. We'll follow the order of service as it's found here in the service folder and as it appears on the screens behind me. And our opening hymn is hymn 486, Wake Awake for Night is Flying. <laughs>
table, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things we should not have done. And we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all your sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
loving God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom, prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson for today, from the book of the prophet Habakkuk, chapters 1 and 2, the first couple of verses of each chapter. A lesson we can relate to as Habakkuk gathered the, the thoughts of his people along. Why must we continue to suffer this way? Why must the enemies of the church continue to rage against us alone? And God gives his answer to it. The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received, How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. And the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time, it speaks of the end, it will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, the enemy is puffed up, his desires are not upright. The righteous person will live by his faithfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 130a, Out of the Depths. The choir will introduce this by singing the refrain and that first set of two verses, two times through there, and then we'll join together to sing the second, the, the refrain the second time through and join in those verses and the glory be to the Father through to the end with that closing refrain.
The second lesson is recorded in Revelation chapter 22, beginning at the sixth verse. In this closing chapter of this vision that God gave to the Apostle John, we hear Jesus speak. And we hear him remind and promise, I am coming soon. The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I heard, the, heard and seen, and when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel. Who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this scroll, because the time is near. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. And the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, beginning at the 35th verse. These words serve as our sermon text this morning. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will, not, it will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready. Because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated to sing our next hymn. Lo, he comes with clouds descending.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The words for our consideration here this morning are the words of the gospel, reading just the final verse of our, our lesson for today. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect. The words of our text. Ready or not, here I come. I'm guessing that everyone here has said those words at one time or another in your life. Maybe it was back when you were a child and playing hide and seek on a regular basis with your siblings, your cousins, your friends. Maybe it's been as you've had children of your own, and they've wanted to play hide-and-seek. Ready or not, here I come. Those words come after that time of counting. One, two, three, all the way up to ten or twenty or whatever it is that you've set as the number that the person who's it, the one who's going to be seeking, is going to count to until they come and try to find you. And it's a mad dash, isn't it? As the rest of the kids scramble, the older ones, they know all the good spots. The younger ones, they kind of fumble around. I can see. They get to their spots. The kids who enjoy the game, who are into it, they are still, quiet. There's always that one, though, it seems, huh? Can't quite find his spot. He runs to the first one that he wants to use, and his older brother's already there. He hustles off to another one, dives behind the couch just as he's getting settled. Here I come. And the curtains are still moving as the one who's seeking turns around to start looking. He finds him quickly. They tried hard, but they just weren't quite ready. They were easy to find because they weren't settled. They weren't still. In our lesson for today, Jesus tells us be still as we wait to be ready for his coming. But we ask today, what does readiness really look like? Jesus had just finished telling his disciples that the Father is pleased to give them, those who follow him, who listen to him, He's pleased to give them the kingdom. It's coming. It's theirs. The end is not in doubt. And what was true for those disciples is true for us too. Heaven is ours. We merely wait for God's timing to make it so in terms of its fullness, of the glory that's to be revealed to us. And as we wait, did you catch what our focus is to be? It's hard to miss it in these six verses from Luke chapter 12. Because Jesus mentions it three times. 
Be ready. Be waiting. Be watching. It's so important. So important that Jesus repeats it again and again and again to his disciples and to us too. Be ready. And it's important because about the only thing that Jesus hasn't told us about the last day is when. The closest he comes is just to say, I am coming soon. What does that mean? To a God for whom a thousand years are like a day and a day is like a thousand years. What is soon? He doesn't tell us. But he does tell us that it will come unexpectedly like a thief. playing hide and seek, there's always that one kid, it seems, who's sort of complacent about it. He's not maybe really into the game. It's not his favorite thing. He'd rather be out in the snow with a football than inside playing hide and seek. And when the counter gets to three or four, he starts to scramble and go as fast as he can. That one kid is the one who's just kind of dragging his feet, sauntering off, sort of nonchalant about it. I'll get to a spot. I'll find a place. He doesn't really care if he's found first or last. He doesn't care if he has the best spot, the newest spot, the one that nobody else has been to before or not. Maybe because he's been playing for a while. Maybe because he's starting to outgrow the concept of the game. He's just not into it. It's easy for us to, to arrive at that point as we hear Jesus say, be ready. And yet we feel beaten up like the people of the Old Testament in our lesson for today from Habakkuk. There's all this stuff happening all around and it seems God doesn't even care. Violence, Habakkuk said. Ever turn on the American news? I mean, just, just think of the number of stories this week. Major episodes of violence in our streets. We become bored with watching. There's so much else going on. It's not the first time probably you've heard this lesson or one like it. For some of you, this is the 80th time. Pastor stood up before you and said, keep watching, be ready. Jesus says, I'm coming soon. But time keeps going on and on. And Pastor, he said, Jesus said he's coming soon. When is soon? It seems not to be coming. And the only things that are coming continue to be the frustrations and the troubles and the challenges and the ridicule and the FOMO. You know what that is? FOMO? It's an acronym fear of missing out. We hear you. But what if he's already come? What if we've missed it? Or what if as we're waiting, we're missing out on all these other pleasures of life? 
all these other things that our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers are doing and involved in, and we sit here waiting and waiting and waiting because Jesus said, I'm coming soon. The world around us lies about those pleasures. How important they are to us, how valuable they are. We keep vigil, vigil watching for Jesus. And they keep living their dream. What are we missing? You see it coming? It's hard to keep watching and waiting and being ready. Go back to that game of hide and seek again for a moment. There's often that kid too, who really is pretty good at the game. He finds all the newest, smallest spots he can, he can creep into. And as the seeker goes looking for the rest, he gets tired of waiting. He's found such a good spot that the seeker can't find him. And he finds the first. And he starts to get antsy. And he finds the second, and pretty soon the kid who's in the perfect spot, he just jumps out and he's like, I'm here. I didn't think he'd find me. Right? He, he gives up. He's distracted. You can't take it anymore that all the other kids have been found and here he is, he's bored. He couldn't wait. It's hard for us to wait too. We've become accustomed to getting what we want when we want it. We live in such a society of immediacy that gratify instantaneously as soon as we want it. And who of us doesn't want Jesus and heaven? But we've also become multi masters of multitasking. So there are some who I think are right on this who would tell us that we can't really multitask. We just flit about so quickly from one thing to the other today. Right? We can't be involved really in two conversations. We can't keep them straight. But we try to be. Right? But at one moment we're focusing on the conversation we're having in a text and then the other we're, we're turning our attention back to what our wife is saying. It's not really multitasking. It's just how quickly we're flitting one to the next and how challenging it is for us to really focus and give attention. It used to be that we learned patience because that's what life was, right? You didn't know someone was waiting for you to get back to them in this conversation because you weren't even there to hear the phone ring. And it's not until you get home and there's that voicemail. Or even before that, before there was voicemail, and they had to call you back, or stop by the house, or catch you at work or church or See you at the grocery store. But now we're so consumed with devices and technology and instantaneous gratification and answer that when Jesus says, just wait, be ready, it's hard for us. We're not used to it. 
we expect an answer immediately. Why didn't they respond? And where is Jesus? Did he forget? We've heard again and again today that he's promised to return. And when God promises, God does. And so it is that we just must be ready, waiting for his glorious return. But what does that readiness really look like? Jesus says, be dressed and ready for service. Keep your lamps burning. It's a picture that he's using here. Don't be in the shower. Don't be just lazing around. And I can't help but wonder if when Jesus says, be dressed. He doesn't have in mind the clothes that he's given us. The robe of his righteousness. And a reminder to keep that wrapped around you. Don't be swayed by all of the things that swirl around in the world. By all of the novel and unique ways that people are trying to get God's attention and earn his favor. Don't be swayed by a world that constantly turns to our own reason and human utility. Readiness being, means being completely dependent on Jesus and his sacrifice of grace. Trust in him. Know that he keeps his promises. Even when it seems so long in coming. Trust in him. Jesus is coming back. And we must be ready. In the military, they train. They train just for this, right? So that at a moment's notice, when the call goes out and the warning sirens go off, whatever steps necessary to neutralize the threat can be accomplished. I'm always amazed at how quickly we can get fighter jets and bombers scrambled and into the air when the Russians fly a little too close to the coast of Alaska. But they prepare. They train. They exercise. Jesus is coming. Unexpectedly. Like a thief. You and I must continue to prepare for Jesus' return. Must continue to be in the Word. There He equips us and speaks to us and teaches us and trains us so that in fact we are ready. When He comes again, as He has surely promised. Amen. Please stand. of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together to confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. You may be seated at this. Continue with the prayer of the church. We'll use the responsive prayer printed in your service book. Eternal Lord, give us peace as we ponder the good news that you forgive our sins in Christ. Lead us to see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Work in us so that we believe and live the word we have heard today. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Fill them with a love like yours as they proclaim your grace to us and all people. Move us to love all mysteries of the word, wherever they serve. Guard and guide the families of our congregation. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Give patience, and give parents, help parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus all their lives. Grant joy to those who are single, and make them a blessing to others. Protect us from the temptations that surround us. Give us pure hearts and minds. Provide wisdom and insight to those who make laws and set policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens, and defend those who cannot defend themselves. Bless our land with peace and prosperity, so that the gospel may be proclaimed to all. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and open the gates of heaven. Fill us with joy over every sinner who repents and comes to trust in you. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body or mind. Pour out your special blessing on all who will travel this holiday week for, for Thanksgiving. Give them safety of travel and allow them to enjoy time with family and friends and to return back among us safely. Give patience and compassion to all who care for the sick and the dying. Lift the eyes of the distressed to your love in Christ. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence.
Please stand for prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our, our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you in faith and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn. It is well with my soul.
Good morning again and welcome. Several things to highlight here uh, this week. Uh, first of all, the Keizu Campus Ministry is meeting tonight, lasagna dinner and uh, board games. Uh, so certainly encourage you to, to join us for that. If you have a college student in the family, I encourage you to invite them to join us for that as well. Uh, that's at 5.30 this evening. Uh, we'll, we'll finish up probably by 7.30 sooner if the kids uh, need to get back and get some studying done, but um, certainly encourage you to join us. Uh, our Thanksgiving service, Thanksgiving Eve uh, service is at 7 o'clock Wednesday evening. Uh, that will be followed by a pie social. Everyone loves a piece of pie, so uh, certainly encourage you to join us to, to Offer our thanks to God for all of his blessings through the past year uh, and plan to stay for that pie social. Uh, if you are coming, I certainly invite you to bring a pie too of your favorite kind, you know, pumpkin, apple, blueberry, uh, pudding pie, mincemeat, whatever it is, right? Bring it. Uh, we'll have the, the coffee and lemonade and water and uh, whipped cream uh, for the top. Uh, but come and join us for that. Plan to stay uh, and enjoy some time together uh, before getting off to join your family and friends on Thursday. Everyone Outreach, we saw that video last week. Um, the council met this week in their normal meeting and we're gonna move forward with that. Uh, tentatively, uh, planning on February 18th and 19th, that's a Saturday, Sunday, it'll probably be two afternoon sessions. Uh, I say tentatively and probably because we've got to work with our synod and, and uh, find out who will be coming and what their schedule will be to make that happen. But uh, that's our, our tentative plan anyway. Uh, look for more information about that as soon as we do get that finalized and uh, we'll get a sign up sheet out and certainly encourage you to join us. Um, Judy posted the poinsettia sign up if you'd like to order a poinsettia to beautify our worship area uh, during the Christmas season, certainly encourage you to do so. Um, that's on the easel there with the flower chart, so take a look at that. And then uh, we received this week the, the Advent devotions uh, from Martin Luther College, Word Made Flesh, the Historical Reality of Christmas. Uh, a beautiful uh, set of devotions to take us through the Advent season. Uh, there are plenty of copies there on the table in the uh, entryway. Certainly encourage you to take a copy for yourself and use them. Uh, take one for a friend uh, who might benefit from it. Use it, uh, invite them to, to go through it and, and certainly let them know that if they have questions or want to learn more, uh, they can certainly join us here as well. Um, I only put about half of what we received out. So if those are all gone, just see me. I'll put more out or I'll grab some for you. Uh, but take a look at that. I'd love for, for us to be using this uh, this Advent season, which Advent starts next Sunday already. This is the last Sunday of the church year, so we're into the new church year uh, next Sunday. Uh, and certainly invite you to join us for that as well as we begin to, once again, re re uh, live our Savior's life and death resurrection and all that he's done for us so that we can look forward and be ready to join him in heaven. With that, uh, have a great day. We were going to do a lot of singing with the kids but not have a formal lesson. We're going to do singing with the kids but not have a formal lesson. So it'll be a little shorter. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so we've got fellowship planned. There is stuff out there. Encourage you to take a look at that. Stay and, and join us for that. Uh, with the, the attendance and the weather and so on, that, we'll do that with uh, Bible class too. We'll just, we won't have a, a, an adult Bible study. We'll just extend our fellowship time while the kids are rehearsing. And uh, we'll get back to that next week with uh, the Bible study. But stay and join us for, for some fellowship and, and have time together. With that, have a blessed week.